Welcome to the new show, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I've just literally days been out the jungle and the dramas have begun. Just when you thought it had all gone quiet, she's back. You read the headlines. This is the exclusive behind the scenes story of what Katie really did next. Carry my bag, you bitches. Life for Katie's as crazy as ever. Shit, the fire brigade are gonna come. This don't look good. With highs. Hello. And lows. I feel very used. I feel misled. In 31 years, it's the worst Christmas I've had. As she faces an uncertain future. Come and talk to my kids in peace. I've asked her 10 million times, is there any chance that you and Pete are going to be together? This is where it all begins. Go, go, go. We are the newlyweds. That is my new husband behind. <laughs> when we last saw Katie Price, she began life as a single mum of three. And then she met new boyfriend, Alex. It's like I've got a new lease of life now. Absolutely loving it. Happy, 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 happy. But Katie needed a new challenge to focus her mind. So she booked in for a return trip to the Australian jungle on hit show, I'm a Celebrity. She went in for closure on Pete, but the memories were painful. How weird, it's as if, like, you expect Pete to walk past. And the trials were gruelling when the public turned on her. I, I'm just, I really miss my kids. I just, I just don't want to be him anymore. After eight days, it all proved too much. Battered by the public, Katie walked and was desperate to be reunited with the man in her life. I'm looking forward to seeing Alex. Oh, it's fantastic. But then Katie learned from friend Michelle Heaton that he talked to the press about their relationship. Boss become an orbit of propose here. What? Oh, and we really? think live on TV. She felt betrayed and was furious. I don't want him near me, Diana. He's gonna do a story about our relationship anyway. Just let him do it. Katie's love life is hanging in the balance, so she's turning to her best friends. Makeup artist Gary, his husband Phil, and publicist Diana are in Australia waiting for her at the hotel. Hello. 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 Don't oh, even ask. Oh, I stink, Gary. Oh, oh, I do. Smell that. It stinks. Oh, oh, I miss you loads, all of you. Oh, I'm so glad I'm there. I've got two spots there, my nails and that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, out. that's <laughs> it. She's coming out, she's broken nail, that's why. I just didn't want to be in there anymore. So I'm. 31, I'm old enough in my life to know what I do and I don't want to do. And if I don't want to do, yeah, it's a game. I didn't stay to the end, but people can't say to me I didn't try because I've done it before and they know I am capable of staying. I miss the children and so I've come out. I'll probably get stiff walking out, but you know, I physically couldn't do anymore. After the public gave her such a hard time in the jungle, Diana's keen to lift her spirits. Dad, so wanted to get a message to you saying, it's not just, it's not a hate yeah, vote, you, you know, it's a positive that, it's vote. not. Because for you, you must have felt everyone's hating me, making me do this over and over. It wasn't like that. But it's not Absolutely. like that. I just they hope were. you don't see all of that voting as a battering, because it wasn't. But the public aren't the only ones playing on Katie's mind. No, I'm not talking about Alex and all that on camera. I'm dealing with that separate. I've just come out. I'm only to assess the situation. I don't care what everyone's saying. Once again, the men in her life have turned things upside down. So tonight, behind closed doors, Katie gets the full story from her friends. The following day, Alex is en route to Australia, but Katie's about to get something off her chest. She may have walked out of the jungle, but Ant and Dex still want that exclusive interview, and they get it when she makes a shock announcement live on air. I just don't well, want to be in a relationship. Yeah, I just realised I want to be on my own. I don't okay. want a relationship. 
Um, as I of... hope we can remain friends as of I came out. Katie's ended her relationship with Alex, fearing he's using her to step into the celebrity limelight. I feel very used. Um, I feel misled. I feel... What is going on? Is it like, is money important to him or fame? I, I just really don't understand. As soon as I got in, he couldn't wait to go and do stories. I've told him time and time again not to do any stories, to stay away from the media and him to stick to fighting and me stick to my job. I just don't think he understands they wouldn't be interested in him if it wasn't for me. He said to me today, I got a text saying, I'm on my way ASAP, you're the love of my life, you're worth fighting for. But now I've wangled it that I can go home early to see the children, I'm actually leaving tomorrow. I've done lots of thinking and I'm not putting up with it. Don't do stories, don't use me to get famous. Katie's brother Dan has arrived in Australia just as she's dropped the bombshell. It's probably quite harsh to uh, dump someone live on TV. It's probably number one of the top 100 things not to do when you want to break up a relationship. But hey, this is Kate, you know, she, she'll do the things that aren't the norm. Like with Pete, like with Alex, they're both great guys in their own ways. Uh, I just want to see Kate happy as my younger sister. It's so sad that, yeah, it's coming up to Christmas and I'm going to be alone. I'll have my kids and then people will have them and then I'm on my own. It's like a shit end to a year. It's an absolute joke. But today, Katie must focus on business. The past year has been one of incredible change, which has seen her work with a whole range of new people. And today is no exception. We're on our way to do a shoot with Hello Magazine. So we're at a beach today. And uh, here we go. Katie's personal life may have been turned upside down, but with work, she seems keen to be in total control, as photographer Mark's about to find out. I'm very quick, by the way. OK, that's good. But I get bored very quick. When I know you've got the shot, I will say, look, you've got the shot now, and let's move on. I'm very like that. Yeah, all right. Standing for hours all day, it's like, no, I don't do that. I get bored and then I'll get moody. It's right. like... I get bored very quick. And then she turns into a monster! <laughs> So Katie heads off, hoping today's sophisticated new look will go down well with the readers. Day two, trying to find the location. Water. Water. Carry my bag, you bitches. Carry them. Slay before me. I don't think she quite knew what to expect because, um, because you know, she's not worth the photographer or whatever, but I think she's doing a brilliant job. And I think it's just going to be like quite sort of groundbreaking this shoot because it's just so different from what she usually does. Well, she's gone and done it again, hasn't she? Blown them all away. When you know, you think I'm being a bitch. It's only because I know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. You know, when that's someone right. says do this, I'm like, no, I'll do it my way. Uh -huh. But not only because I know what I do. Yeah, that's cool. That's right. I'm, nice. being a bitch. <laughs> I'm being bossy. I'm like, we're doing it like this. At least Gary's prepared to do as he's told. Work it, own it. Care for the t-shirt doesn't blow up and show your belly. With the beach shots done, it's back to the Versace Hotel to continue the shoot indoors. I'm getting really tired, so I just need to do this quick because I'm oh. flagging. And Katie's still calling the shots. Oh, I don't like that angle. I hate messing like this. So not me. So where do you want the next shot? Um, well, let's do it. Because you can it. zoom in for covers. There's no book posing for cover. Let's do so it. Let's um... zoom in. So far? Yeah. Mark's keen to continue the shoot outside, but Katie's worried that the paps, desperate to get the first picture of her since leaving the jungle, are everywhere. Well, you could try, but I'm telling you now they weren't. In fact, there'd probably be more of them there. They'd be doubling up now, so they're not right. here. And she's not wrong. 
I said if we do a shoot outside, the paps would get wind of it. People were like, no, they won't, no, they won't. And to our surprise, five minutes later, there's five paps out there. But they're still insisting on doing a shoot out there. So they're all going to hold a sheet up. It's very rare for the artiste to be ready before the photographer. Smoke screen and bed sheet in place to protect her from prying eyes and lenses. The shoot continues, but Katie's not impressed. I think it looks shit. Luckily, Gary's on hand to perfect the shot. Oh, the pee pee's out. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, boys. Hope you enjoyed my bossiness. Awesome. And I'm sure you're not hoping to see me again. <laughs> Don't all agree right. at once. With, uh, um, no. Work done for the day. Katie's mind turns to Alex. I'm hoping to see Alex. I don't know if he's on his way here or not. One minute he is, then he's not. Just to have a chat with him while my brother and Diana are here. Just to go through with things in his head. The reason why I'm not with him. To explain to him. Because once I leave here, I'm not going to go back and meet up with him in England and all that to go through it. I want to do it now. And it's so sad. Such a, such a shame. And I'm still in shock that it's all happened. It's sad. I think I'm emotionally drained the past two weeks. Bloody hell. Coming up, difficult decisions. I want to be on my own. I'm, I'm not putting up with this shit. An emotional homecoming. <laughs> but is it really all over for Alex? Obviously, there are still feelings there. I can't just switch them off. It's two days since Katie shocked the nation by ending her four-month relationship with Alex live on television. He's now arrived in Australia, and tonight she's summoned him to her suite. It's the first time they've met since Katie left the UK over two weeks ago, and before dinner with her close friends, she scheduled a talk. Yeah, she's upstairs, giving him a once-over, finding out what the truth is. Now, they could even be arguing. Or they could be trying to make it. I just don't know. You know, things change every five minutes of case, so you just don't know. But I think, I think she's more or less got it in her head that she's not, they're not going to be together. Desperate to find out what's going on, Gary, Michelle and Katie's sister-in-law try to listen in. We've been talking for about an hour now. Um, we're not sure what about. We've heard a little bit of shouting. I personally wouldn't give him the time. Alex is a really, really nice guy. He's a great guy. I just don't think he's the right guy for Kate. But Katie is giving Alex the time, and crisis talks continue upstairs for another two hours. I'm texting Kate. I'm texting her to see if she's OK. I'm sure she's fine. And if she needs me, not that I can do anything against six foot five Alex, but that's the love of my own. And to let her know that we're all really hungry. <laughs> it's about two hours later. I've had about ten monkey nuts and we're still not going out for dinner. So we got a reply from Kate saying just, what? it's OK, just talking, won't be long, kiss, kiss. Oh. Well, at least we know. Feel? At least we know they're only talking. You Can you imagine? Thing? No. They're not on the exit, don't worry. Well, I did hear a bit of... <laughs> no, you didn't. Finally, after nearly three hours, talks come to an end and Katie's had a change of heart. When I saw him, I'm still looking at him thinking, oh, my God, I'm just so into you. Just, I wish we never argued. I wish we were back to normal. Deep down inside, I wish I didn't say and tell you that I dumped him, but I was so pissed off, so angry. I thought, fuck this, I, I want to be on my own. I'm, I'm not putting up with this shit. At the end of the day, I have fallen for Alex, and I don't really care what anyone says. If I want to be with him, I'll be with him. If he wants to be with me, he'll be with me. But anyway, we sorted it out, made up how you would make up, and that was it. But Katie feels Alex has betrayed her trust, so there are some ground rules. 
I said, I don't want to be pictured with you. I don't want anyone to know where to go. Obviously, our family and friends can know, but I don't want anyone else. I don't want the press knowing. I said, because I need you to prove to me you're with me for me. And that that's all. So I just don't want to be used, basically. It's fine if he wants to be famous, but don't use me to do it. So I have such connection with this woman, and I think about it all the time. I've only got honourable intentions and her best interests at heart. And to be dumped on national TV, I couldn't believe it. I hate this celebrity shit. I really hate it. I just... The one thing I know, I love her to pieces, and I'm, fighting for, I'm a fighter, and I'm going to fight for her the whole way. I think about this woman every time. I go to bed, I think about her. I wake up, I think about her, and, like, she's my life. <sighs> Who knows what will happen? He might decide he don't want to be with me, but at the end of the day, I'll probably get heartbroken because this is one guy who will probably break my heart. Who knows? I say things all soft, like, ah, oh, and then I'm like, but if. But I have to do that because that's the way I can look after myself. But let's just hope he doesn't get me heartbroken, that we can stay together. Forever. Katie's giving Alex another chance, but their relationship is on shaky ground until he earns her trust. I feel more hurt than what I did with Pete, strangely enough. Today she's flying home and is at the airport doing her first telephone interview with Hello Magazine, and they're desperate for the full story. I really liked him and liked his company. I, I just, you know, it, I just thought. You know, it could be a long-term relationship, but that's all been bolstered up by all what's been happening. You know, I can't just go off someone just like that. If things get sorted and worked out, then <clears> fabulous. <throat> if not, then I'd be on my own and just, you know, still be with my kids and the horses and continue. Just see what happens. But obviously, there are still feelings there. I can't just switch them off. It's been a painful few weeks, and now Katie's future with Alex is hanging in the balance. She's desperate to get home. Mummy's going to be back after one more sleep. And then Mummy's going to open her arms and give you the biggest cuddle and kisses ever. And I'm going to squeeze you so tight. Oh, just get me home. I just want to get home, turn my phone off, just get in my house and play with my kids some peace and quiet. At Heathrow Airport, Mum Amy, concerned about how Katie's bearing up, is on standby with family friend Louise. I'm glad she's coming home, because it's been a bit of a horrendous time for her out there. But I think she did really well, so I'm glad she did it. But I wish she'd stayed in longer in the way, because I was getting into it watching her and seeing... Um, seeing her being herself again, if that makes sense. Because I'm quite proud of her. No, I have missed her. And in fact, what has been nice, it's been peace not being nagged by her, right? But everything's been, like, with the papers and everything, it's been horrendous still, really. With Katie's early exit from the jungle and split with Alex front page news, <laughs> it's chaos when she lands. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because we got all our suitcases. Hello, daughter. Hello, Louise. Hello, Hello darling. Are you all right? Yeah. How are you? Yeah. How are you? So, have you missed us then? Dramas. Absolutely. Actually, drama. you look well, actually. But for Katie, not well enough. Got no extensions in my hair. Oh, no. Nothing. Have you got any extensions? Well, you don't need no. Look at it. Let's have a look. It's really nice. I think it looks all right. I think it looks all right. Up to see her. No. Oh, oh, I wonder when I get the kids. Katie's due home any minute, and the welcome party, and not so welcome party, await. Oh, here we go again. All these outside oh, the house. Look at them all. Dramas. Dickens. Honestly, they didn't get anything. She 
she's finally back where she belongs. And there are three very important people waiting. After some quality time with the kids and a quick change, Katie's ready to give her friends and family a taste of the jungle. That was my water bottle. I've even left some water in there so you can taste what the water was like we had to drink. You've got to taste it to know what I mean. It tastes like a fire, doesn't it? What's it smell? Oh, it smells. So taste it. That is official jungle water. Smell that. Oh, I was a lot but I've washed that in the pool. But imagine a hundred times worse than my hair. Something like this. <laughs> See you later everyone. I'm out of here. <laughs> What's that? Next, is there something Katie hasn't told her mum? I've asked her ten million times. Is there any chance that you and Pete are gonna be together? And Katie feels the heat. Quick, 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 go, go! Ah! Yesterday, Katie arrived home after a tough few weeks in Australia. She's decided to give Alex another chance, but is keeping their relationship secret until he's proved she can trust him. I haven't heard from Alex. I have had my phone off. I haven't heard from anybody. Um, it's good to be home, but I'm not in the best of moods today. But still, it's good I'm home, even though I feel like shit. Harvey. You're speaking to Daddy, Harvey. Yeah. Love you, Dad. Hello? Hello? With Katie's love life, past and present, splashed all over the front pages, she's decided enough is enough. Shit. But I'll order what you mean. That's none of the night. Well, just tell me what you want me to order. This is the first day of many days where I'm not getting any more tabloids, any more magazines. I don't care what's in the papers. I've had enough of all tabloid bullshit. She's now made me cancel the newspapers. She says, right, I'm going to get on with my life, I'm going to do my life, so if I don't read anything what's going on, it won't affect me. No, that is it. Don't need anything else. So, no newspapers, she's moving on, and we'll see what happens from there. She's actually not talking about work, she's talking about home things and what to do with the kids. But the question on everybody's lips, is it memories of Pete in the jungle that have really affected her relationship with Alex? I've asked her 10 million times, is there any chance that you and Pete are going to be together? No. Junior! I'm coming! Come and speak to Daddy. Before the jungle, Katie and Peter were communicating through solicitors, but yeah. now things have improved. It's just them two talking about the children, arranging what they're going to do, who's going to see who, who's going to see what, can they agree between them, how are they going to work it, and it's working. Love you, Daddy, bye. So to me, that's... They've moved on 120% that they're just talking about the kids, so I'm happy. All right, cool. All right, then. See ya. Bye. Katie's been home three days, and tonight it's her first public appearance since leaving the jungle. 
She's still trying to get her relationship with Alex back on track, but must keep it under wraps, so she's going alone. It's just a party with Piers Morgan. I'm not feeling up for it, but I'm not going to let them down. I just don't do nothing, to be honest. She might not be feeling good, but she's determined to look good, so she's called in celebrity stylist Bernard Connolly. Obviously, Bernard, this will be the first time I've pictured since I'm back. But Bernard's more interested in getting the lowdown on the jungle. You know how you've got a thing about bad breath? Mm. You've got to tell me who had the worst breath in the jungle. I bet it's that Kim, eh? You do make me laugh, Bernard. Oh, gossip for a slug? If I did, I wouldn't say I'm have learned oh. that one. No joy, so it's on with the styling. It's all about the asymmetrical look this year. The diaphanous. <laughs> Come what? again. The what? Well, this is fashion terms. I know you... This is fashion terms. I know it goes above your head, but when you get a proper stylist on your books, this is the terminology we use. Asymmetrical diaphanous. Et voila. I love the fact that I can actually do Kate's hair when it's not actually on the head. Cos I had fish guts in my hair cos of the jungle, I took them out. This is my real hair. Look how short it is. That is my own twiggly bit of hair in a ponytail. Look at that. It only comes about down to here, but it's not very thick. So I wear my pieces. But you must look away cos you can't see how I do it. With Katie looking the part, there's only one last thing to do. Put on a brave face and step out in style. Katie's dealt with the paps, but in two days she begins her book tour, which means meeting the public for the first time since leaving the jungle. So she needs the perfect outfit, and what better way to put the problems with Alex on hold for the day than to go shopping. I'm loving that already. This is the chorus of mm. Ties of the Band. Absolutely love it. Great. But she won't be paying for a thing. So I've asked them here if they could give me seven outfits for the, my seven book signings, and also I'm going to ask them weekly if they can supply me some real fashionable outfits, which I can only wear once, and I'll give back to them. And that's what everyone does, isn't it? I'm a diva now, and that's what divas do. Borrow outfits and give them back. Katie's new book's about style, but this style author needs some pointers. I'm so crap at putting stuff together myself, so I can just say to her, from top to toe, make me some outfits, give me some outfits. Time to start on some serious retail therapy. Oh, I love that. Is that appropriate? Love that. Back? Heaven. I'm in heaven. What do you think? That's Lionel? really nice. You could wear that over that. So if you had shoes and take the bottoms off them, yeah. So I don't okay, damage them. Cool. Yeah, perfect. And I see that. Yeah. <laughs> what if I'm having a fat day? Let me see sure. your stomach. No way. Uh, oh, yes way. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yes. With freebies on offer, Katie decides to kit herself out for another professional engagement. Diana, you know the Comedy Awards on Saturday? Why couldn't I wear what that dress for it? That's dressy, but yeah. yeah, it's a bit rocky. So it's one, two, three, four, new shoes, five, this Comedy outfit. Awards, six. six. That's it. I've got right. enough shopping for the day, and the best thing is I didn't have to buy any of it. Just as well, given it should be £3,579 worth of shopping. So, shop strip bear. <laughs> she even took my boots off the leg. <laughs> Katie heads home for more shopping. In the comfort of her own living room. Surrounded by everything she needs to take her mind off her relationship problems. The girls. Oh, I love that. Tonight, she's booked a clothing company to put on a party, and the theme... Shop till you drop. It's nice for the people because they can just come up, chill, mingle, and I'm just going to quickly nab these before they go. Mum Amy, friend Julie, and especially Katie are in shopping heaven. Did that, all did that. I would have one of them. I think you should. I think Katie's in the element here. She likes all this, doesn't she? I'm surprised she hasn't bought it all. What? I bet she's had a good. Has she? Has she? She's like, let's go. I bet she is.
but the past is never very far away. And one thing has caught Katie's eye even more than the clothes. I've just seen a newborn baby and I feel broody. The baby I lost with Pete, we would have had the same time, me and Leanne. <laughs> you are so gorgeous. You are so gorgeous. Sorry. What's she called? Libby. Libby. Oh. And she's tiny. She's like I love baby. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> a bit of fluff on the nose. I absolutely love babies. <laughs> nice. so and, uh, so tiny. It's two days later. Katie's been back from Australia a fortnight, and today it's back to work. Off to the airport. Don't know where I'm going. Somewhere up north. Oh. Morning, all. Morning. Morning. Good morning. Come and join us on our mad book tour after the jungle. Maybe five more people might turn up. <laughs> We are off to Manchester. I actually know that now because I got told in the car. I'm not smiling because I think I've still got crumpets in my teeth. This is the first time Katie will face the public she feels turned on her in the jungle. So today could prove daunting. And this time, she can't take Alex to lean on. And they were busy before, so they might be busy, they might not be, I don't know. But it'd be interesting to see. So, time for a distraction. Sunglass shopping just to add to the 15,000 <laughs> other pairs that she's got. Oh, hello. I have to get them. Guess what? We have to get them and another pair of shoes. I have to get them as well. And they're all full of them. Oh, I like these ones actually as well. I need to Oh, I have to get them. Oh my god. <gasps> Pink and black. Love them. I oh, know. They're a bit out and John. Can I get these ones as well? Eight pairs of glasses later and over a thousand pounds lighter, Katie thoroughly kitted out for sunnier climbs, jets off to Manchester. Check. Bye, I yeah. love her. Here we are in Manchester. Hey, I'm from Manchester. Oh, gosh, that's such a generic accent. It sounds like some. Indian Bollywood no. star or something. Like it's my own, like, my accent from Manchester. Anyway, I've arrived in Manchester, and as you can see, it's very sunny, but it's freezing cold. It really is. But I'm on my way to do my book signing, and hopefully there'll be lots of people there. But I have to wait first because I gotta do my makeup. Oh, and it hard work having an accent. Oh. <laughs> Katie may be in a playful mood. When she arrives, she seems increasingly anxious. Is there, is there a lot of um, people out there? Because this time of day, it's normally the, the evening ones that are normally busier. No, there is. Yeah. There are some people, yeah, wow, well, I've got some fans still. Wow. Whoever turns up, however big or small, I'll just sit there and sign the books regardless. And if there's not that many, then I think, oh, easy signing, I finish early. And if there's a lot, then. I just troop through it. If people want to turn up, they turn up anyway. Yeah, of course. Happy to She may have felt the public let her down in the jungle, but today the fans are out in support. Katie, hey, you've got nothing to worry about. We I all like what your outfit. Oh, thank you. We all love you've got nothing to worry about. You've got loads of fans. <laughs> I think she's just press and made out to be a bad person for milk. She's not. I think she's a good role model. She's a good mom. She's great. She's a great businesswoman. She's a great mom. She's just a great icon to look. She just love her. She's fab. Smile. And you've got the perfume on as well. I can smell that too. A great fan. Love it. The signing went really well. Well organised. Very pleased. And I'm going to get you out of the room because I'm getting changed into my track six. So off you go out. And in Stockport, there's another big show of support. And it is mental out there. 
think probably another 300 people more than at the last signing. Gorgeous. It's okay, Mummy's there. Ready? Nice, Daddy. I mean, when she was in the jungle, you know, and everyone was voting for her to do all those tasks, it was awful, but I don't actually think it was because people didn't like her. I think it's because if you didn't Love like it. her, you wouldn't want to see her every day, you know, so you wouldn't vote for her. I've got to be honest with you, from seeing the thousands of people that I've seen outside, she is definitely not losing fans. By the way, we love you. Oh, thank you. Are... A successful signing over and a big boost for Katie, but the fans aren't the only ones desperate for a piece of her. We're, we're arriving at the hotel and there's loads of paps there. Now, I've been on two signings today. You know, they should have come there to get their picture. So if they think they're getting this picture now, they can think again. They are not getting the shot over my dead body. And if there's one thing guaranteed to perk up a tired and weary Katie, it's a good game. Time for pricey plays with the paps. And we'll pretend to be getting out, wait for them all to come in. So good. As they prepare to photograph Katie getting out of the car, she drives off. Right, put your foot down. Go, mind the door, Dinah. Quick, quick, quick. <laughs> quick, oh Dinah. Yeah. Quick, quick. Ah! And then comes up with a plan to switch vehicles, leaving Gary as a decoy in the chauffeur-driven car. If we could jump in a black cab, go, open the door, quick, quick. Quick, 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 quick. get out, go, go, jump, jump, jump. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I'm now in a black cab following the driver in my car. While the Paps follow Gary, little do they know Katie's arriving back at the hotel. I'm going to get out this one and he's set. Right, Diana, I'll pay you. I'm going to run in. Go, go. It worked. My trick worked. Getting in a black cab fooled them. And now for the fun bit. Gary, getting out. <laughs> that was good. Suckers. Suckers. Coming up, Katie reveals all. I was so cold out there, I even wore my tracksuit, what was under my dress, but no one knew. And comes under attack. I've never been egged before. It's the 12th of December, two and a half weeks since Katie walked out of the jungle. Now she's back at work on the second day of a national book tour. Mummy loves you so much. Yeah. Harvey's such a gorgeous boy. That's right. Loves you, Mummy. Mummy's in the jungle. No, Mummy's not in the jungle now. Mummy be home soon. Bye-bye. Bye, Love you, Harvey. Bye. Bless him. Since the public reaction to her in the jungle, Katie's doubted her popularity. But yesterday, Manchester and Stockport went well. My signings, you know, were still busy as normal, so that was really good. And it seems to have boosted her confidence. Ding dong. Merrily on high. Heaven, the bells are ringing. Oh, <laughs> what? We've lost the lash. Shut up, Gary. Not Shut up. So <laughs> you definitely had it. Yeah. There it is. Aha. Uh -huh. the lash. We found the lash. <laughs> All she needs now is a good turnout in Liverpool. And they're not her only fans. While the tabloids insist on doing Katie down, the broadsheets are celebrating her. OK, today, The Times have got people of the decades. Top 50, you're in there. Number one, Barack Obama, then the Queen, Katie Price, Osama Bin Laden and Simon Cowell. Not bloody oh, bad, not eh? not bad, eh? Huh? What are they saying about a video? Yeah. 
This is a woman who is beyond embarrassment, modesty or taste. She began as a topless model, now lays claim to be a businesswoman, broadcaster and writer. She has carved out a reputation and a fortune for herself, which makes her a role model for thousands of younger women. Her body is a construct. So was her marriage, her books and her career. She's intelligent, focused and remorseless. I understand why Martin Amos is fascinated by her. More importantly, who's she beaten in the poll? Helen Mirren's 44, Kate Moss 43 and Andrew Flinter 46. I'm only reading out who's on my page. But it's quite an achievement actually, for one being in the Times and for being in the 50 top people in the world in the decade. I said that all wrong, but you know what I mean. <laughs> but as Katie knows only too well, fame can be a double-edged sword. Somebody pelted some eggs, tried to hit Kate with some eggs or something. Um, and we thought, oh my, I couldn't believe it. I thought it was obviously some kids or something. And it's two grown men. They've just found the guys. And it's two grown men throwing eggs. And it Buckle. hit Diana <laughs> on the back. Guess and, what? Um, they didn't egg me. Um, it's just stupid. What are they going to gain out of it? Yeah, I egged her. Well, they missed because they didn't egg me. I've never been egged before. Someone got out of bed the wrong side this morning, and it certainly wasn't me. See you later, Katie. Bye. Bye. So, with absolutely no egg on her face, Katie heads back to London. She might divide public opinion, but since leaving the jungle, Katie's celebrity status seems intact. Wow. I've now arrived to my last job of the day, ladies and gentlemen. It happens to be the Comedy Awards. Tonight, she's been asked to present an award and would be rubbing shoulders with the cream of British comic talent, not a circle she normally mixes in. We're looking at all the names on the door, so we've got J.K. Rowling, Mark Lefebvre, Guy Freeman. Freeman. It's a prestigious event, so for the press shots, she piles on the glamour. Katie style. I was so cold out there, I even wore my tracksuit bottoms under my dress, but no one knew. Secret to the trade. As soon as this is off, I'm coming back and put my tracksuit on. Hi there, Katie. Let's just give you ten minutes' warning. She looks the part, but the ceremony will be watched by millions, so it's important she plays the part. I am nervous. I hate doing the awards. It's live TV. I'm, oh, you know, I'm walking on, I might fall over. I don't know what's going to be said to me. I'm out of control, and all I have to do is read out an envelope. Oh, my God, do I say their names right? Welcome to the Comedy Awards. Tonight, we're given out... <sighs> Nominated for the Best Television Comedy Actor is... Rob Brydon. Woo! Have you got the nominations, though? Robert Webb. Woo! And Simon Bird. Woo! And the winner is, my guess... Rob Brydon. Woo! I'm just off now to go downstairs to give an award to Rob Brydon, Summit Dank, and Summit Bird. Brilliant. Well, what's in a name? To the end of the British Comedy Award, the lovely Alan Carr and Katie Price. That, that's a couple the nation wants to see together, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> that is! <laughs> 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 I'm only doing this to get on the front of OK magazine. <laughs> <laughs> While Katie's enjoying herself, Jonathan presses on. Would you like to tell us who have been nominated, or shall I do this? Let's have a look first at the nominations for Best Television Comedy Actor. But finally, she gets her moment. Oh, well done. Simon first. <laughs> I finished for the night. Yeah, it was quick, on and off. Just Abby, Chris Allen. So it went all right, actually. So it's goodbye to all that glamour. This is a moment where the hair so comes off, man. the lashes come off, the all teeth right, come... Sammy. The teeth come out. The eye comes out. The tits get removed. Oh, let's get the wig off. Oh, I'll get the wig off. The fake scalp's coming off. 
The fates oh. <laughs> It's all out. Miss Natural. This is really how I go to bed. Wouldn't you like to wake up with me? I know I was. <laughs> Trusty tracksuit back on, Katie prepares to head home after a successful end to a busy two days. Actually, it's quite good me doing these, these awards. They're good people up there, aren't they? Why they chose me, I've no idea. It's not what you know, it's who you know. It's been a tough seven months since Katie found herself in the eye of a media storm when she split with Pete. Now she's walked out of the jungle into more man troubles and feels let down once again. But she's looking on the bright side. Despite her fears, the fans seem to be on side and she's back home enjoying being a mum again. All in a day's work when you're the top 40th person of the decade. Come here, show Nanny. Look at Nanny. Oh my God, let's have a look. Look at me. Wow. How cute do you look? You look like a mini me. I look a mini me. That's right. You look like a mini mummy. Next week, it's Katie Price. It's midwinter madness as Katie looks forward to a dream Christmas. Ooh. <laughs> that would do. You don't have to sell it. I'll have it. It's sold. But it's not going to go as planned. It's the worst Christmas I've ever had, to be honest. There's more from Katie at nine next Thursday here on ITV2. Next tonight, Bambi seems to be missing the point when she gives out freebies in Secret Diary of a Cool Girl.